Follow this diet to the letter every day. Then at the weekend, it's time for a reward. Saturday is treat day. The wrestling life. Hey everybody, it's The Wrestling Life. It's episode 239, first week of July 2020. I'm Ethan. What are you looking at, Zippy? I'm Liam. <laughs> See you at the bar, Zippy. Uh, <laughs> hey, we got a lot to talk about. We haven't done a show in like a month. What's going on? Well, I haven't done a show in like a month. You did a show. What's going on? Yeah, well, uh, things did not get better while we were while we were off, as it turns out. Uh, turns out there's still a pandemic. Yeah. And uh, as we discussed on probably maybe our last show or two shows ago, um, the whole strategy of just deciding one day to open everything back up and cross our fingers did not work. And now a lot of the states that were opening are closing back down. Oh, and there was a COVID outbreak at the Performance Center that did other wrestling companies. So what a what a few weeks it's been. <laughs> yes. I can just say I we did discussed uh off the air not wanting to turn this into COVID Observer Radio. And yet <laughs> like there are I believe so restaurants in my neighborhood uh reopened for outdoor dining like a month ago and then for indoor dining at limited capacity like two weeks ago Mm -hmm. and within walking distance of my house there are like five restaurants that have had to close this week because an employee tested positive (laughs) (laughs) this is a really bad idea yeah um Nothing, as I yeah, as we talked about, uh, nothing really changed. The virus didn't get less uh, spreadable, sure. and there's still not a vaccine, and there's still, other than wearing a mask, there isn't a lot that can be done to curb it, other than staying home and staying apart from other people as much as you can, and. Um, yeah, we just we you know we tr- we decided to try another route, and <laughs> and it didn't it didn't work out so good. Yeah, we got bored, and or we decided uh, that the economy was more important than human life, and decided to just start everything up again. So, by the way, uh, since we're on the topic here. Taz, I like Taz. Taz has been great on promos this year. I think he's been the best promo guy. He or Edge has been the best promo guy in the business this year. Okay. But uh, talking about running a sloppy shop and then taking a veiled shot at WWE in his promo on Dynamite, he said uh, they don't run a sloppy shop at AEW while he was standing in front of Neon PED billboard Brian Cage <laughs> in a ring surrounded by uh, as many as 60 people not wearing masks is... Uh, no, I think that's a sloppy shop too, pal. There are no good guys in and, this story. And according to uh, various reports, there were quote-unquote sponsors and their friends in the cra- in like the upper bowl who were not tested before being let in. They yeah. just were temp-checked and told to wear masks, so they didn't even do the testing on everybody. Yeah. Yeah, those are the 60 people that I was referring to. They, oh, okay. Um, I thought you meant just the wrestlers who also aren't wearing masks as they sit <laughs> directly next to each other and don't wear masks. That's a good point, too, but I was not counting those people in the in the 60. Uh, that's an additional... Way, I, I just want Jake Roberts to wear a mask because I'm tired of looking at his weird teeth. His <laughs> weird fake white teeth. I just want him to wear a mask for that reason, beyond the fact that he's also geriatric. And could probably die if he contracted it. I just want him to wear a mask because of them teeth. I heard somebody, or I read a tweet one time, uh, someone saying, you know those teeth that uh, all the new teeth that all celebrities get? They don't make them into medium, do they? 
mean, that's especially true in Jake's case. But uh, yeah, so I mean, we we got to be weeks away from a show with people in North America, right? I mean, we're one week away from shows with limited capacity in Japan. And we got to be close to that uh, here in the United States. What do you think? Yeah, I think so. I mean, there's, I guess WWE has delayed their plans to try to run an arena show like this month, but (laughs) they're clearly chomping at the bit to do that. And AEW at least has the deniability of it being an open air arena that they film their TV in every week. So, yeah, I think, I think it's very likely. And, uh, probably it's not smart if you're not, I mean, really, even if you are testing people, but especially if you're not, um, because again, it's kind of like an honor system thing to be like, you feel sick. No. <laughs> All right. Go in and enjoy the wrestling. <laughs> right. I mean, the, yeah, the temperature checks are something, but they're like super ineffective. And if you were exposed, you know, three days ago and you're not showing any symptoms yet, and you get your temperature checked, and there's no problems. And then the next day, you wake up with a fever. Like, <laughs> which, by the way, it's pretty much what happened <laughs> when Renee Young was tested for COVID and tested negative, and then went home, and three days later, tested positive for COVID. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, and there was a note a few weeks ago I talked about it on my little half solo show I did. Uh, that sh- I think it was Sean Sapp mentioned that there were people who did show temperatures that WWE was still letting into the building uh, mm. prior to the outbreak. So apparently if it was a fever, but like not a bad fever, you could <laughs> still maybe come in. Cool. Um, so yeah, even they weren't even doing the little tiny bit they claimed to be doing well uh, before, before the giant outbreak happened. But yeah, it's uh. uh not, not a lot of, I don't know, a lot of positivity we can spin out of this story. Uh, you know, it's just neg, neg, you know, negligence and, you know, the pursuit of capital uh, <laughs> uh, at the expense of the health of the worker. So, no metaphors to be made about, you know, the entire American economy there or anything. No, certainly not. You want to go down the list of names of people that have not been appearing on WWE, t- WWE television since Word of the Outbreak uh, uh, came out. Yeah, that sounds fun. All right. Street Profits, AJ Styles, Austin Theory, Daniel Bryan, Finn Balor, Kevin Owens, although we know that's for a different reason, Liv Morgan, Mandy Rose, Randy Orton, Natalia, Nia Jax, <laughs> Otis and Tucker, Mojo Raleigh. Shorty G, Raquel Gonzalez, Rey Mysterio, Dominic Mysterio, Sheamus, Sonya Deville. I think the only one, I think A is on SmackDown this week. Uh, when people are hearing this, I guess SmackDown last night, probably. Sure. So, again, that's not necessarily a comprehensive list of people that have tested positive. It's just if you want to do an, if you wanted to conduct an investigation... That's where that's where you should start. Yeah, I mean, to your point, uh, last week SmackDown was a very bare bones show, and several things they had advertised, including an AJ Styles title defense, got moved a week. Uh, so clearly, there was at least some concern over over him. And yeah, I don't I don't think it's just a coincidence that all these people <laughs> who have been regulars on TV just suddenly I don't think they all just decided to take a for a week. So yeah. <laughs> Where there's smoke and all that. Sure. Uh, Extreme Real- Rules is being built up. Monday Night Raw. All I know, like, I've been uh, on New Japan duty for, like, three weeks now. And so my my sleep's all screwed up. My schedule's all screwed up. I catch bits and pieces of WWE here and there as I'm, like, editing YouTube videos for F4W's YouTube channel and stuff. And, like... We're recording this Friday night. I got SmackDown on in the background. Uh, but all, all I know is every time I turn on Raw, um, there's like a 47-year-old guy either wrestling or talking. And I've seen more MVP matches this year than 
in in the previous decade. Like what? Obviously, Bruce Pritchard has a slash Vince McMahon has a uh, philosophy right now, and that's to run in the opposite direction from what Paul Heyman was trying to do in Booking Raw <laughs> and trying to get new people over, and that's to run with Pat Hand and have Big Show, who debuted in WWE in 1999, and Randy Orton, who debuted in WWE 2002, and Ric Flair, who debuted WWE in 1991, <laughs> and all of these people <laughs> all over television. Uh, what do you think about Raw's choice to, uh, you know, go in a in a different... Oh, Dolph Ziggler in the world title program. Um, you know, I'm glad to see Sasha Banks in the Raw Women's title program, but also she's a SmackDown wrestler, and that was just never explained. Uh, there's just... There's a lot going on with Raw, and I don't... Uh, I don't see any of it being good for the future. What do you think? Well, so the the good and bad of Heyman being out of power is that there are less cucking angles. <laughs> um, but yes, it also means that the the half start and stop pushes of some of these young young guys and new acts that he was working very hard to get over uh, have also suddenly stopped and. Randy Orton moved on from a feud with Edge to a weird non-match match with Christian to a uh, alliance with Ric Flair to feuding with The Big Show. And, yeah. The one I don't get, like, I get, like, because he always calls Big Show when he, like, Big Show's his, Vince's security blanket. I get that. Right. Um, I don't get Dolph Ziggler in a world title match because Dolph Ziggler was never a guy like I'm, I'm trying to look I guess maybe he just looked around and he's like one of the only guys left that's <laughs> like was around when maybe he felt like he had more of a handle on things sure. or maybe it's Bruce Pritchard thinking well being like maybe the last time Bruce Pritchard looked at the internet was like 2011 when people were really into Dolph Ziggler and he thinks this will be like a big deal for the hardcore fans to see Dolph in a world title program. But Dolph's like the kiss of death for a world title reign. Like he's the person you put with the champion you don't believe in. Uh, and someone illustrated that by showing it was like he worked with Ambrose and then Ambrose lost the title. He worked with Kofi and then Kofi lost the title. Like he, he just, you put him with, he, he's like a, He's just such like a judgment day pay-per-view opponent, you know, like he just screams beyond my personal hatred of him as a person and a performer. Yes. Um, he just screams like, you know, B show main event world titles going on third from the top. Yeah, no arguments here. No arguments here. He's been there for 15 years now, so <laughs> just just another old guy. Yeah, I, I saw the Ziggler being put in that spot as the demographic that Bruce Pritchard has talked to in terms of wrestling fans over the last decade, which is lapsed fans or fans who think Dolph Ziggler is a good worker still and look at their phone during his matches. Uh, <laughs> that's who he's talked to. <laughs> at his, I really think he's trying to do the right thing there and thinks he's trying to serve the fans by putting somebody in that spot that they like. Problem is, that ship sailed a long time ago, as you mentioned. So, And it felt like they were doing something with, with Lashley. Like, they had MVP talking about how, you know, Lashley has waited 10 years or 13 years or whatever to get to get a one-on-one -on -one title, title match, and he's building it up, and... And you, it felt like that was like a big moment. And then Drew just beat him. And now Bobby Lashley's feuding with Apollo. And Drew, and it's not like you had some other great, credible contender ready for Drew. Like, right. I would have been fine with another uh, bodacious Bob Drew uh, Haas match. And instead, we're, we're doing Drew and Dolph. And so, by default, I can't enjoy it, even again, aside from my personal distaste for the man. He's just not an. He's just not an interesting. It's it's very similar to the Miz. Like 
I like the Miz. I think he's a talented performer, and I understand that he has like a role to play because he's a good ambassador for them. But like when he's on TV, I'm like, I have watched this man for over a decade, and I can't care about anything he does. Sure. Um, I would also just like to point out one more thing from Raw. Um, just generally speaking, as this is a free flowing discussion that occasionally touches on mature subjects. <laughs> um, notice that uh, MVP is managing Bob Lashley. Mm. Um, they're feuding with Apollo mm-hmm. Cru- Cruz, and uh, what you know, those three people just randomly selected and thrown together is uh, interesting. And the setup guy for uh, Apollo in this feud is going to be uh, uh, Ricochet and or Cedric Alexander. <laughs> mm-hmm. And uh, Akira Tozawa is now uh, a ninja who has a gang of ninjas with him. Yeah. And there was also something, I don't know if this ever made TV, but where Apollo, or I'm sorry, MVP was approaching like Shelton Benjamin backstage, and then he had a match with, and then Shelton had a match with uh, Apollo. Yep. Yeah, that happened. I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that, I don't think that we, t- we got a chance to talk about the terrible Street Profits Viking Raiders thing. But yes, even. Everyone, I think, at the time assumed it was just this awful comedy bit of Akira Tozawa, who I think last time I saw him was being kidnapped on NXT. Sure. Um, now he's now he's just a ninja, and uh, yeah, he's he's he, and then he showed up the next night, and he was still a ninja, and he's a ninja man now with, and he has ninja lackeys, and he, and he uh, he wrestles our truth now. So there's there's just some weird stereotype things going on in booking there yeah i mean i'm I'm waiting for him to like throw salt in somebody's eyes yes or to threaten to chop off somebody's uh member or something yes you know play up play all the hits yes absolutely uh on the smackdown side how do you feel about bray wyatt coming back as uh you know a swamp leader swamp swamp <laughs> guy swamp man swamp thing i don't know well, I I think I thought that was the time Bray Wyatt had the most potential <laughs> was before they decided to make him magic. Yes. When he's just a creepy guy with some weird brainwashed followers. Yes. Um, that was when Bray Wyatt had the most potential to me. And then he was, you know, teleporting and shooting lightning or whatever. And it all kind of got terrible. Um so yeah, it's it's an interesting idea. I think the fiend, while visually striking, has been a little overplayed on WWE television, and they were getting diminishing returns from it. And if Bray Wyatt needs a character to wrestle as while you wait for the fiend to come back once every six months or whatever, uh, having him wrestle as the silly guy in the sweater. And ha- trying to build a serious match out of that is not is not great, I imagine, if you're trying to do like a serious program of, of any kind. So having like a third persona, you want to, you know, I don't I don't want to compare it to Mick Foley because Mick Foley and the Three Faces Foley stuff is like whether you know whether it's hard it's hard for me to tell a lot of stuff that happened in the late '90s whether or not it was actually good or not. But there were forty thousand people screaming their heads <laughs> off every week, so it seems like it was good. Right. Um, but like the three faces of holy stuff is so iconic to people. And I guess this is a dollar store version of that. But again, I think Bray as a as a, a creepy swamp leader was was the best version of Bray to me. So, hey, th- there are worse ideas for Bray Wyatt than to take him back to basics, I guess. Yep. Uh, there's a uh, there's a tag team or there has been a tag team. Uh, on Raw here in 2020, called the Kabuki Warriors as well, talking about uh-huh. weird, 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 stereotypical things. Uh, one half of them is now the Raw Women's Champion and by far the MVP of the company right now, and that's Asuka. 
And the other is Kyrie Sane, who is apparently retiring. She's going to go home to Japan, maybe work another year in stardom, and then uh, and then hang it up. Uh, Kyrie Kyrie's great, uh, but after seeing her injured seriously several times now on main roster WWE TV, I'm not upset by this news. What do you think? No, I think it's it's probably the bet for the best. Um, it's one of those things where you wonder what could have been because she seemed to have so much potential as a you know a great a great hero a great character that you could build sympathy on and if you could you know people seemed to want to invest in her and uh, you know from a fan fans wanted to invest in her as a as a baby face and they, they never even really tried with her on on the main roster they threw her in a random tag team as you mentioned with a pretty quasi random and then they just turned them heel one week. And then, worst of all, even before this pandemic started, like three months before when WrestleMania was still going to be in the Buccaneers Stadium, they changed her pirate gear. They took away her yacht persona. Yes. And made her, I don't know, she had like a, a umbrella now. And I was just like, oh, okay, they, they just never got it. And they were never going to get it. So, and then yeah, on top of it, she was there was that debacle at TL, at the TLC match, and then you know they kept having her have to wrestle Nia Jax, and things did not go well. So, uh, yeah, I think it's for the best. Like it's a bummer because obviously it was it would have been nice on TV regularly having good matches and uh, getting a chance to maybe be a star. On, on easily accessible television in the United States. But, yeah, I mean, if you're a fan of hers, you can always seek her out. It's obviously a lot easier to keep track of Japanese wrestling than it used to be. So, I mean, it's 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 the only bummer is maybe, you know, her her matches won't be as accessible, but that's, that's really here nor there. And, again, it's if the choices are watch her on American TV get uh, destroyed by green women, or what you know potentially have to search out a match of hers in Japan I'll I'll uh, I'll take the latter there. Uh AEW they had week 1 of Fighter Fest this week NXT counter programmed with a great great American bash a Dusty Rhodes creation just absolutely petty but mm-hmm. I found I found this to be an acceptable level of petty given I feel like when you take a sledgehammer to a Triple H symbol on your first show, you kind of deserve whatever you get after that. <laughs> and, and so I don't feel bad for AEW that WWE is using intellectual property that Cody's dad created uh, to counter Cody, given that he took a pretty heavy shot at them on their first show. Like, it's petty, yes, but it's wrestling war petty. It's not like... You know, a personal attack, I don't think. What do you think is more petty, them doing that or them attempting to keep the Cody Rhodes trademark? Um, it's a good question. Both are petty. Mm-hmm. Uh, I feel like the Cody Rhodes trademark thing is more personal though. Or I feel like this the Great American Bash thing is like tongue in cheek. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, the Great American Bash thing seems more like a knee-jerk reaction because Cody started, uh, like, trademarking Bunkhouse Stampede and stuff like that last year. Yes. And at the time, at the very least, he claimed, well, I'm just doing that because I'm trying to, you know, get my, my father's stuff. Right. Not not It's not at all for <laughs> AEW use, and maybe that's true. I don't know, but I... but. I don't, so I don't. I don't blame WWE for trademarking stuff if they think it's intellectual property stuff or names of shows that might, you know, that they might be able to use or put slap that name like they do with Starcade now, where right. they just like slap it on a December house show every year now and right. air it on the network. Right. I don't have a problem with that one. I think yeah, the the, the not letting him go by the name he went by for. A decade, decade. That that one definitely seems a little bit more like. Definitely know. We definitely know Hunter was mad right. after he after he 
blew up a throne with a sledgehammer. <laughs> but at the same time, you know, they didn't they didn't go after Billy Gunn for like five years when he was doing Billy Gunn stuff under the name Billy Gunn on the Indies. Mm-hmm. Like, like I, I. <laughs> I don't. I don't have. I don't necessarily have a problem with that either. <laughs> like, like, yeah. I, 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 I mean, don't know. To your point, it's it's petty. It's wrestling more petty. Um, like I said, I understand why the the Cody Rhodes last the Rhodes last name I would imagine means a lot more to everyone in the Runnels family on a personal right. level, right? Uh, more than more than the Great American Bash or. Slambury does. <laughs> right. But, but what a terrible name. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, it was pretty much hands that's... down always a terrible show, too. It was like the one that all the main eventers skipped every year, too. Yeah, they, they all had like yeah 10 pay-per-views in their contracts. <laughs> yeah, you get the main event of like Goldberg and Mongo or something because everybody else was off. Yeah, nice sidebar here. <laughs> yeah, that was good. That was a good. That's good free flowing discussion right there. Yeah. Anyway, uh, it's petty, but yes, <laughs> back to the point at hand. Yes, they WWE counter programmed an AEW pay per view on free TV with their own big show on free TV. I saw AEW. I thought it was a really good show. There was some weird stuff on it still because they can't help themselves, but. Um... Just a lot of good wrestling, uh, wacky BS storylines kept to a minimum. Uh, I think they think FTR is a lot bigger deal than they are. <laughs> um, they they are they were in the main event segment this week. They have another show next week with uh, a title match on it. Uh, the tag titles are up for grabs again, and instead of having the tag champs face off with their opponents next week in the go home segment they had the tag champs face off with ftr (laughs) which is like all right you want to go there at some point but you got they got a match next week against somebody else and it's not like ftr are uh you know the heart foundation of the second coming of the british bulldogs so like those guys are great and i like them Mm -hmm. but i think they think they have a lot bigger deal in ftr than they do um, yeah, I just, I think maybe there's like, they're penciled in for maybe being part of a group with Cody or somebody else that's also a big deal on the show mm-hmm. down the line. So I think they, they want to really hammer home that, hey, these guys are a big deal and every team in the company wants to wrestle them. Right. And that's fine. But to your point, at the very, while they're, when they come down and are jawing with, with Kenny and Hangman at the end of the show, and the Bucks come down, just have private party stand stand <laughs> on on the stage, get Matt Hardy twenty seconds on the mic, and say, "Hey, while you uh, guys are all busy, my guys are ready to go, and they're going to take those titles from me next week." And then they'll fight the Young Bucks, and they'll fight FTR after that, or whatever. That's all you got to do. Like it's simple. Yes, you can you can have your cake and eat it too in that way, but they yes. chose not to. To your point. Yes. So that and uh, Jake Hager, sorry, rock hard Jake Hager being a what? thing. That he was introduced as a rock hard Jake Hager for that match. Okay, yeah, I'll be honest. I, I fast forwarded through the ring, the entrances and ring intros because I DVR'd the show this week. So yeah, I, uh, I missed that little nugget. The, the very problematic Justin Roberts announced the very problematic Jake Hager <laughs> as, as rock hard Jake Hager. Great. Uh, yeah, so uh, Jake Hager and, and uh, the weird clo- uh, show closing angle were to me the things on that show that I didn't care for. Yeah, um, I don't, I don't get what we're doing with Jake Hager because he's already had his world title match. Mm-hmm. So you're working, on, so now he's like, okay, he worked up the card, and now it's time for him to work down the card. If right. we're if we're booking this like it's you know 1980s <laughs> WWF, right? Um. So, okay, he worked with the world champion, with the, you know, secondary champion. Yep. But they, like, 
protected him because I guess they're going to do a rematch with him and Cody. And I was like, nobody. <laughs> I don't know. Who wants Maybe this? They're... Yeah, I don't know. I guess I guess Cody wants it. And <laughs> apparently nobody tells him. Nobody is telling him no. And like, hey, man, if you want to do like if you want to pretend like it's 1984 and you're on Crockett TV, that's great. But like <laughs> you got to. <laughs> We got to cut bait with this guy. Like, sure. Like, he was fine as the big guy standing behind Cody or standing behind Jericho saying nothing. That was the perfect role for Jake Hager in this company. And they've just ruined it by trying to make him branched out on his own and giving him his own, like, his wife is his manager now for some reason. And, like, I don't, I don't know, man. It's just, it's just not working for me. It's a really weird deal. Yeah. Uh, for sure. Uh, uh, I will. I will just say before we move on from AEW, I loved that MJF and Wardlow uh, versus Jurassic Express match. I think that might be my favorite match of the the quarantine era, at least in AEW, possibly in all of wrestling. Wow, it was really good. I just, I just had so much fun with it, and I, I just, I think there's a thing where, like, because he's such a great promo. That's all anybody ever talks about with MJF. And, like, he's also really, really good in the ring. And he's, he's, it's just, I mean, it's not, it's not a newsflash to say MJF is great, I guess. But, like, I think people sleep on his in ring a little bit because of how good of a promo he is. That's fair. Uh, NXT, I haven't seen yet. Uh, did you get a chance to see it? What'd you think? Uh, bits and pieces. I think uh, they're, I think it was a good show from what I saw. I haven't gotten to watch the whole thing yet. I'm going to try to watch the rest of it this week again, but um, they built some stuff up for next week. They have, uh, they have uh, Tegan Knox as the number one contender. They're, they're setting up, of course they have the, the double title match coming next week. And, uh, and uh, then, yeah. <laughs> and then what a, what a time for you to be on. This is like some cruel cosmic joke. That you're so busy with New Japan and AEW right now, while your favorite wrestler is on all three shows every week. Yes, and she's wrestling dream matches against Io Shirai and Asuka. Like, yeah, I I am really really looking forward to seeing uh, the Sasha and Io match from Wednesday. Like I've read that maybe it was not the best match of the night on either show, mm. but but. Um, yeah, it's it, it. There's there's that show. If I wasn't being paid to watch AEW on Wednesday, uh, like show with uh, Tegan Knox winning a number one contenders match and Sasha Banks in the main event, yeah, I'd I'd, I'd, I'd be watching NXT for sure. <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, I promise no ratings talk, but uh, you were you would not be alone in the <laughs> people that people that wanted to maybe watch EO and Sasha instead of. Uh, Hangman and and Kenny against the uh, the best friends. I mean, in terms of total audience, they did the biggest quarter hour of the year for NXT. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, they did nine they did nine hundred thousand viewers for that. For and that just quarter. a rem- reminder, Charlotte was the one that was supposed to bring up the ratings for NXT, correct? Yes, mm. yes. Mm. Now, yeah. Now I saw, I saw. Here's an argument that someone that I will. Not call by name, but we'll just say maybe has vested interest in being a Charlotte apologist said <laughs> this week <laughs> saying, well, EO was made a bigger star by beating Charlotte. <laughs> so even though she d- didn't, didn't no, <laughs> uh, she did not. Right. She, Am I crazy? She pinned Rhea. Right, that's what way, I was... <laughs> but she didn't. She didn't pin Charlotte. That's what I thought. I was nobody pinned Charlotte. Cra- <laughs> I thought I was taking crazy pills. No, she was in the figure eight, and she yeah, right, 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 yeah. But uh, EO was made a bigger star by beating Charlotte, which led to the big number, the bigger number than this week on NXT <laughs> than any number that Charlotte drew. <laughs> okay, well, that's a theory. <laughs> Um, who's to say, really? 
Um, I thought that's like <laughs> the biggest logic. There's no logic in that statement whatsoever, but okay. <laughs> okay, but imagine this. You are friends with uh, Charlotte's father. <laughs> Right, and he perhaps perhaps <laughs> you're perhaps also imagine you're a journalist. Yes, and Charlotte's father uh, relays information to you <laughs> yes. uh, on a somewhat casual and friendly basis. Sure, and Charlotte's father would perhaps be upset with you if you if you were maybe a little more if you took a different stance. Yeah. We just talk facts for a minute, and that since she came back a year ago, Sasha Banks has a proven ratings draw pretty much in every show she's been on. <laughs> like, it's 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 just facts, you know. Yeah, she and she and Becky did really good numbers on when they they were feuding on Raw. Um, I'm and I'm sure there are other numbers after that that I just don't know about, but. Yeah, she seem it seems like people are interested in her. <laughs> and yeah, and they put her in a match, in a high profile match against perhaps another talent that is also popular and that people uh who maybe would be more willing to flip back and forth went and saw, "Oh wow, those two are wrestling each other." It's it's, a, it's that's a <laughs> That's a wild strategy in wrestling, I know. Putting two wildly popular people against each other in the main event of your show, and uh, you know, promoting it and telling people to tune in to watch them wrestle each other for the first time ever. Uh, imagine that—that that it worked and that people wanted to see that. So the thing that she's got going for her, Sasha Banks is going for her in uh, the fact that they're using her on all three shows now is that she's a heel. And they like booking heels, and they book baby faces to look like idiots. Mm-hmm. But uh, the negative, obviously, is uh, she's on all she's on all three shows. And, and how long is she going to uh, continue to pop numbers when she's on? You know, three hours a week on TV. I mean, yeah, eventually that wall of diminishing returns. One would think, but hey, just. You know, we'll, we can, we can cross that bridge when we, when we get to it. Just just enjoy boss time while it's yeah while it's still a happy thing. I'm trying. I'm trying. Uh, they gave Extreme Rules the tagline the horror show. By the way, they sure did. Extreme Rules the horror show. It's not. I don't love it as much as I love Roadblock End of the Line because that's like yes. the all time terrible tagline, right? For a show for me, but that they made in every promo. Yeah, um, but Extreme Rules, the horror show, is pretty good too. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Uh, New Japan, New Japan Cup uh, final is set for next weekend. Okada is going to wrestle Evil. The winner wrestles Naito for both belts. Uh, I, I really thought my man Taichi was going to take it this <laughs> time. Well, the fact the that way, they were simultaneously. I'm in the camp that Taichi is actually good. By the way, I like Taichi's matches. I think um, Angel Garza has exposed Tai Chi. <laughs> <laughs> it's just an, it's the magic is in the pants. Is that what you're saying? Yes. the The only thing left that Tai Chi has to teach Angel Garza before Angel Garza will have completely eclipsed him as a performer is they both do the the pants spot where they take their pants off in celebration, mm-hmm. uh, but. Taichi also does a spot where if he takes his pants off, it's fine and good. But if someone <laughs> else if someone else rips his pants off, he covers up as if he's yes. been exposed and strip and stripped nude. <laughs> yes. Garza he's very embarrassed. <laughs> right. Garza has had people rip his pants off and he has not mastered that yet. Once he figures out that when he does it, cool. Someone else does it to him. You need to act embarrassed. He will be a better performer in every way than Tai Chi. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I, I, I like. I mean, it also put when they put him in there with like Ishi or people that are really good. Yeah. But I don't. I don't know. I just feel like somebody, somebody somewhere, maybe that's friends with Charlotte's father, decided that uh, Tai Chi was like the worst. And I'm like, no, this guy's fine. And he has, and and also he does that pants thing, which is funny. So <laughs> he's not 
Also, like, if you want to pick a guy to just expressly hate in New Japan, Yoshihashi is right there. Like, yes. and he's clearly the worst. So just yeah. let's lay off the Tai Chi hate and let's move on to everyone hating Yoshihashi as much as I do. Yeah, we, we might have a new candidate, though, with Mas- Master Wato debuting. <laughs> Like, this guy has blue hair, but it's, like, the cheap Leva Bates blue, not the Sasha Banks blue. Like, he can't afford the good hair color. Mm -hmm. And uh, it just looks like an absolute geek. And then he got laid out by Doki in his debut. And Doki, by (laughs) the way, is just, as far as the heavyweights in New Japan go, absolute bottom of the barrel. So. Yeah, that's that's not a promising start. That's a a real uh, Kizarni or... uh... Captain New Japan type gimmick. Yeah. But uh, lots of good stuff uh, in the New Japan Cup. Um, you can go, if you're not watching every show, you can go to WrestlingObserver.com and uh, read my reports, and I recommend matches at the top of the, the top of the report. If you don't want to read 1,500 words about matches you didn't watch, you could just read the first three lines and, <laughs> and figure out which <laughs> matches you need to watch from the show. Today's show... Friday's show, the semifinals were free. That show ruled. <laughs> it was like two hours, and it just it ruled. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I mean, you you kind of you had me at at uh, Okada and Hiromu, but I, I I hear the whole show was great according to your report. Yeah, yeah, they had a match of the year candidate in the main event. Um, I I would have put Hiromu over, even though like I know. You need to be careful in being a guy like Okada. I, I, I still would have put Hiromu over, but they went a different direction. They had the heavyweight, heavyweight beat the junior heavyweight, which is what they do. <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, so next weekend is New Japan Cup Final on Saturday and then Dominion on Sunday um, in front of fans. So that's... That's interesting. Things are opening back up. Of course, things are much safer in Japan than they are here right now. Yeah, they took things a bit more seriously and like shut everything down and also have like decent social welfare programs. So, you know, the entire country wasn't in danger of uh, being bankrupted by people working for a month. Yeah. So that that certainly helped. But yeah, it's still there's still not a vaccine, so it's still not as safe as things could be. But um, I don't know. I, I would imagine they're not already going back to Naito Okada, right? So evil is evil winning this? I don't know. Evil's, evil's beaten Okada before. But I, I think Okada and Naito is... I, I do see them going back to Okada and Naito. Okay. <laughs> but I don't know. We'll see. Um, I don't have... A whole lot of other insight or anything else that I want to get into. Is there anything else you want to uh, discuss in a free flowing manner? <laughs> uh, no, not not really. Um, you know, we, uh, as as an aside, we talked about it on Twitter last week, or I talked about it on Twitter last week. Didn't do a show where we covered all of the terrible, terrible people that were exposed as various kinds of sexual deviants or monsters over over the last few weeks um, because we didn't think we were uh, equipped to discuss that in a way that was uh, that added anything. Right. Um, but just to be clear, you know, uh, respect and, and solidarity and, and uh, best wishes to everyone who was willing to come forward. I, I didn't want anyone to think that we were just dodging it because we were like, didn't want to talk about, talk about it but it's, it's it was more about feeling like eh, maybe we can just maybe the world didn't need another two american white dudes talking about uh, uh an issue that uh overwhelmingly only uh affecting women um mostly affected women and maybe they we we could just sit that conversation out so Sure. Just wanted to say, you know, respect and 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 everything to to those people who came forward. But uh, that's 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 why we we kind of stayed away. At, uh, in addition to you also just being swamped in in New Japan work, uh, it just kind of made for a storm of a uh, good, probably a good week to sit out. Yep. All right. Till next time, everybody. I'm Ethan, and I'm Liam.
We'll be back soon with more stories from the wrestling life. Okay, monkey boy, I'll see you in the bar. <laughs> Let's start uh, COVID Observed Radio here. <laughs> By the way, uh, not pleased with the Hallmark Channel, who aired the same eight episodes of Frasier overnight on Wednesday, but they aired overnight on Tuesday. What an oversight. That's, that's unbelievable. <laughs> you got to write a letter to somebody about this. <laughs> yeah. Something tells me the Hallmark Channel still gets a lot of physical <laughs> paper letters yeah there's some uh there's some messenger pigeons still <laughs> dropping off yeah dropping off notes to uh to the hallmark channel if i had to guess yeah any idea what number episode of the show this is it's 239 all right thanks pal <laughs> You're, that's why you are a professional i just remember because i made the solo show two. 238.5 so all right i mean we can make this 240 if you want like at no i mean it's, it's been up as 238.5 and it was only like 20 minutes long anyway so the perfect length it's a half <laughs> it's a half episode so i put it all up right. as 238.5 all right good times i try to keep on keeping on